without representation, I don't think we get nuanced and complex images of Latinidad. Yeah. I think we're just playing to what white people think Latinos are. One of the beautiful things about the Latinx list is that you have 10 writers who all come from different experiences. What drives you? What's that push? To me, my culture represents a North Star that I can kind of follow. Like I'm trying to be the artist both my parents weren't allowed to be. They know how complicated it is being Latinx in this country. We've been here, we're indigenous, this is our home. I feel like now people are willing to pay attention. Hi, my name is Ana Salinas, and my script Inside Cunt is on the Blacklist Latinx TV list. I'm here with my boyfriend, Edgar Montazir, and he's going to ask me some questions about my story, and I hope you guys enjoy. How do you identify yourself culturally? As you know, my mom is from Sweden. She's from a little island off the coast of Sweden. Yeah. My dad is born in Cuba, but raised in Puerto Rico. His whole family left Cuba, so I don't have any family left in Cuba. I've only been once, and it was as a tourist. So my connection is to Puerto Rico. That's where I went growing up. That's where I visited my family. But my dad doesn't identify Puerto Rican. Not at all. He considers himself a Cuban. Mm -hmm. He fought against the Puerto Rican accent and was like, I have a Cuban accent, which... I don't know if he did a good job fighting against I that accent. I totally disagree with it. I think yeah. he does sound he sounds very, very Puerto, Puerto Rican. Rican yeah. On top of that, because it's my mom who's Swedish, her culture was often very dominant in my house. She speak Swedish with me, so I speak Swedish. And my dad, I think, is a little more passive about his culture, but also had a vested interest in Americanizing. I had to kind of fight for my dad's culture. And I never really understood, like, these pieces of his culture as culture. How much of that do you think is because of, like, sort of the complex history of Cuba and maybe pain? And how much do you feel like you wrestle with recognizing all of that. What it means to be Latino for my dad is very different than what it means for me. Mm -hmm. My dad fought against having a Spanish accent, whereas I fought to speak Spanish at all. Mm -hmm. And I do think that's actually a very common next generation phenomenon. Like I, I have a lot of Latinx friends are really self-conscious about their Spanish. And I feel like that's the case with me because I have a point of reference of how bad I am. <laughs> so it all leaves me feeling a bit insecure about what I am culturally. Mm. I do self-identify as Latina because it means half of myself being seen in a way I felt like was erased growing up a little bit. Do you feel like that's why you got into writing? Was a part of you trying to express this, not necessarily hidden, but oft forgotten side of yourself? When I got out here, I was auditioning for parts that just were such a sliver of myself. Mm. And I had always wanted to write, but I think that really affirmed what it meant to write for myself. Writing was a way to sort of meld pieces of myself that I wasn't seeing on screen or getting auditions for. Because it's hard to feel like something's possible if you've never seen yourself there. Do you feel like you see yourself represented? I don't feel represented on TV or in movies. I think Latinas are especially unrepresented in comedy. Mm. And when we do see Latinas in comedy, I feel like it's usually playing to archetype or stereotype. Mm -hmm. I want to see weird Latinas on TV. I want to see them also behind the camera. And there are exceptions, and I feel like those exceptions are people who have carved out the space for themselves. How did you become a writer? I came to LA as a teacher. I actually have a master's in education. Mm -hmm. I was teaching art to the kids. It was like this art immersive school. In doing that, I was acting things out a lot. I would dress up as like artists. I dressed up as like Hello. And I was having so much fun in the performance and also validating these five-year-old mostly Latino kids that they were artists. And I 
ended up getting validated myself. There's this like repetitive theme in your story of this thing that you're like keeping down, exploding out. Is that how it felt to be on the Latinx TV list? I felt extremely validated by being on the Blacklist Latinx TV list. Especially when you're carving your own path, I didn't feel like I had to pretend to be a version of myself. I could just be this like imperfectly Latina writer who is multicultural and very Americanized, but also not American in some ways and weird. And that even my script didn't have to be like tropey or anything. Your script is the very opposite of tropey. Like yeah. we should get into that. Your script is <laughs> insane. So it's called Inside. Cunt. And what is it about? The script is about a girl whose vagina suddenly starts transmitting Russian spy signals. Yes. So it's a spy dark comedy. And when we start our story, she's depressed. She's angry at the world. She doesn't feel accepted. Mm -hmm. And by like taking an active role in what's happening with her vagina and claiming that ownership, she finds a confidence in who she is. What drives you? What's that push? I feel that in order to succeed, I have to be really, really undeniably good. And I think that comes from being a child of immigrants, being an unrepresented creator. I feel like if I'm not working my hardest, nobody's gonna give me the time of day. Mm. For most of my life, I was afraid to admit what my dreams really were. Now, I allow myself to imagine a world where I have created a show and it's on television. You're close to that world. You're on the blacklist, Latinx TV list. We'll see. You grew up looking at the television, being like, I don't see myself, feeling insecure about all of these things. Mm -hmm. How do you inspire these generations of kids to feel power in their identity? I think the way you inspire young Latinx kids is to show nuanced, complicated depictions of identity on TV. Mm -hmm. We can aspire to those things and carve out that space. And that itself is so powerful so that we create more diverse heroes. And I think we get there by writing characters who are fully human and are written from an authentic point of view. Well, that's all the questions that I have, or memorize, if I'm being honest. Well, thank you, Edgar, and thank you guys for watching our discussion, and thank you to the Latinx TV list, and I hope you guys have a great Latinx Heritage Month. Thank you guys for celebrating Latinx Heritage Month. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for all things Hulu, and all accents welcome. Todos acentos bienvenidos.